Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back Whoa. to the uh, welcome back to a lovely, <laughs> wonderful Wednesday. The sound threw me off. Um, it's yeah, too so loud. It is not too loud. Because I told you. Let us know where you're watching from as we get into this. Um, I'm sitting here with, with my dad. beautiful wife Kelsey. Uh, she's joining us today. Um, say a prayer for Pastor Philip. He was so distraught after Sunday's message because of how much he's going to have to step his game up the next I'm just kidding no we wanted to get Kelsey on here tonight hashtag Kelsey on the couch let us know where you're watching from uh why don't you go ahead and do the announcements for us while you're sitting over there looking pretty okay um okay (laughs) Go ahead and apologize for everyone on the dumber one of the three. You're not dumb. <laughs> it's not going to be a good one tonight. It's going to be a great one tonight. Um, okay, so we have... Oh, I got an email. This seems really loud. It's not. Just talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got an email from the Blood Drive, and they actually want to come back in October. They said that uh, the church saved 24 lives with the donations. Um, so that's good. And Grief Share is going to start this Sunday, or on the 19th, I believe, is what your dad said. What was because it? Because um, it had to get pushed back. Yes, I don't remember. She's in the Facebook chat, so um, she'll chime in when um, the video catches up. But yeah, drop, um, Kelly, drop drop the Grief Share, the official start date, um, in the Facebook chat so we can nail that on here for everybody that's listening. Go on. Watching. Watching. Uh, youth night is this Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm excited. It's, it's going to kick back the weekly uh, youth nights, and I did share that to the St. Augustine news page. Good. Bring them all. Let's get the youth here. <laughs> so that's going to be good. Uh, men's group, the tacos and testimony, will be August 24th from 5 to 7. That's going to be next Saturday. Yep. Sorry, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then I kind of wanted to... Your dad will probably get mad about this, but I kind of wanted to give the next couple months just brief what we're going to have going on um, to kind of get everybody ready since it is literally two weeks until September. Yeah, and the year is blowing by quick. Pretty fast. So um, obviously this is kind of tentative stuff, but um, Dining with Dignity will be September 5th. Always the first Thursday of the month if you guys want to volunteer with that. Uh, they meet at the corner of Granada and the bridge at 5.30. <laughs> I hope that was right. Uh, Women's Fellowship will start back up on the second Thursday of the month uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. We also are planning a family fall potluck on the 15th right after church. And then another new visitors class on the 22nd um, for anybody... It's kind of like a new members class, but we don't really like using the word. Member. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. I'm listening. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Um, and then uh, I lied. I don't have all this together. But um, so October, we're going to do our first praise party. That'll be on. October 9th. Yes. Okay. That'll be on a Wednesday night. So we'll probably change family room that weekend. And it'll be sort of like a worship night. Um, we'll do our annual fall festival at the end of the month in October. November, um, we're going to have a Friendsgiving potluck a week before Thanksgiving. And December, we're doing our second annual classic Christmas family movie night. And then our second annual ugly Christmas sweater day. And we all have to make your dad wear another ugly sweater. And then the annual chili cook-off. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more stuff than this going on, but this is kind of what I've already done date-wise. So, And then the, the youth is planning. They're planning their own Friendsgiving in November, and they're planning their own stuff to have an event every single month along with the weekly youth group. Well, I'm sure we'll have more information on that as we get closer. Yep. Um, Kelly said, the, yes, the grief share... 
uh, go see Kelly after church uh, for the grief share thing. She just it looks like posted something on Facebook about it. Oh, never mind. Um, but it is. It starts on the 18th. That's this Sunday. Yeah. Eight eighteen on Zoom at three p.m. Again, we have uh, the grief share group on our app, uh, familychurch.social. Go to scroll down a little bit, um, and you'll you'll see the download link for the app. Uh, and then we have all of our groups and stuff on there. You can access everything, um, and it's a it's a great app. Oh, great, softball. Great community. Oh, yeah, the softball stuff is coming Softball, up we were going to do, everybody kind of in the group decided that we're going to do more of a church league where it's just, we have enough people to do two teams. Um, Tanya Potluck. Uh, where we have enough to do two teams. I think I got gum on my lip. And so instead of doing the rec league this fall, we're going to kind of work our way into it yeah. because of the rules the rec league had with females and males on your team, so... If you are interested in doing softball, um, please go register. Well, not register, but join the group, the um, softball group on the groups page so I know and have your email so I can include you in the emails. Lots of fun. I'm looking forward to that. But this uh, this wonderful Wednesday, we are here to talk about Sunday's uh, lively <laughs> message uh, I had a lot of fun preaching it, if, if you couldn't tell. But if you haven't watched it, uh, after this, go back and watch it. And if you have watched it, go back and watch it again and then share it because I'm not saying uh, shadow banning is a thing, but yeah. So uh, the, the message was locked in, lifted out from Daniel 6. Uh, I read 16 through, I think I stopped at, 20. Yeah, I stopped at 20, and then we went on a little bit from there. Actually, I left off um, verse 24, which maybe I'll bring that up at some point tonight. But I was talking about uh, being locked in with the lions and how Daniel got there because he was um, he was in exile, even though he was, uh, the Bible notes that he was exceptional. He had great abilities, God God helped not only just sustain him in exile, but also to, to lift him up and give him a powerful position uh, and put him in a, a position of, of, of power and authority. He was one of three administrators over 120 satraps, and they hated him for his uh, exceptional abilities and his devotion to God. So they, they lied about him, and they tricked the king into signing a decree that would uh, throw anyone into the lion's den if for 30 days, very specific, if for 30 days uh, they prayed or worshipped anyone other than the king, even the false Babylonian gods, if they did anything other than the king, they were getting thrown into the lion's den. That was weird. They were getting thrown into the lion's den. Was there somebody over there? I don't know. Oh. It's probably your dad turned to sneak I definitely heard something. <laughs> but, uh, I heard it too. Yeah, so he got, he got thrown into the lion's den. And then, if you know the story, the king ran down there in the morning, was anguished. Daniel answered. And then, uh, you know, obviously God saved him because he trusted in God, because God is awesome, God is good. They pulled Daniel out of the pit. And uh, yeah, that, so that was the, the overall for the story. So quick question. Just be, I'm just thinking outside the box here, and obviously I don't know if we have the answer to it, but do you think that when he was put in the lion's den, do you think his faith completely, 100%, he's like, I'm not going to die? Or do you think there was a little part of him that was like, I'm probably about to die? Um, that's a great question. Let me, let me bring up the passage while we're going uh, talking about it, because I did make the, the point of... Um, when Daniel heard about the decree, he immediately went and prayed about it. Let's see, where are we at? Yeah, so verse 9, King Darius put the decree in writing, and then verse 10 says, now, and if you remember the sermon, made a big point about the whole now, Daniel got down on his knees um, and, and prayed facing Jerusalem, giving thanks to God just as he had done before. Um, and he wasn't... He wasn't one of the three. His friends were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they refuse to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar, they get thrown into the furnace. Everybody knows the furnace. They get 
you know, the story of the furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get thrown into the furnace, and then they see there's a fourth man in the fire, which was a uh, pre-incarnate Jesus. It was a, oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank? A, th- a theophany, I think it was called, if I'm pronouncing that right. Basically, it was Jesus showing up uh, in the Old Testament before he actually came to earth rescued them. But if you remember the story, they, they had full confidence in God to, to uh, save them and deliver them. But they also said, even if he doesn't, it's still okay. So um, do I think Daniel's I didn't faith... Mean to, like, did, no, I'm just, I'm, but I'm, I'm working I'm just it thinking out. in like uh, nowadays, because a lot of Bible stories you try to turn into like something that you're going through. And so you try to, you know... Well, that's the that's okay, the joy you know, of the Bible. In every single situation or a bad situation where you know you're not actually put into a lion's den, but you're put in a situation where you know people are lying about you and this and that, and you know you're in a spot where you're like, there's no way that I can get out of this figuratively alive. Obviously, you know if you're getting murdered, that's probably not good. But you know, what I'm saying like in a literal thing where you're you don't know how you're gonna make it. And it's so I'm trying to think of like him. It doesn't really say anything about. Just says he prayed and he gave thanks. Yeah. So it doesn't say like, so I'm trying to think of nowadays. uh, I'm sure. I mean, there's, there's no way, even if you're trusting in God completely like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, they had the the faith, but to me, there's no way. And I'm sure it's going to tick somebody off that's like some kind of Bible purist or something like that because I'm not trying to read something in the text. But to me, there's no way you're going to go into a situation like that and not have some level of fear. We all deal with some level of, of fear on some capacity. I mean, you look at you look at David and he, he charged at Goliath and there was the time when he was running from Saul that he literally went to Goliath's like hometown and pretended to be insane, huh? Theophany, that's what I said earlier. Oh. Um, And he runs to Goliath's town and and he acts insane so they won't kill him. And you you go and you read the Psalms of David as he was going through these things and he's crying out to God in anguish. And so, I mean, there's fear. You look at Jesus before he went on the cross and he was asking God, you know, if it was possible to let that cup pass. He had anxiety. He was sweating drops of blood because he he was in anguish and and had, a lot of people say that he had like anxiety over it. So one would say. So I would say, yeah, I mean, you can't, it's, we we walk, walk, we're not given a spirit of fear. So it's, your your faith has to, um, outweigh the fear because you can't just say, well, I'm, I'm completely fearless. I mean, you look in the Old Testament and that's why it, it, with Joshua, God was like, be strong and courageous. You know, don't, don't be afraid. You know, it, obviously, and he said it several times to Joshua and, you know, the Bible, they say the Bible says, have no fear, whatever, 365 times, one for every day of the year, or 366, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> And it's just we're going we're going to feel fear. You're not going to have a hundred percent fearlessness. That's just there's no way that you can. A lot of people that want to pretend that they don't have such and such emotions forget the fact that God Himself, uh, <laughs> God Himself came down and was fully man in Jesus while being fully God, and He still had and went through every emotion. So a lot of people, they try to act like, you know, I don't, I don't get this way. I don't get this type of way. I don't feel this. And it's like, God gave you these emotions. You're going to experience all of them unless there's some neurological, I guess, disorder where you just don't have something. I don't know. But yeah, I would say there was probably some part of Daniel as he's getting thrown into a lion's den. Because even if you're expecting, okay, well... God, thank you for this. Like, I'm being persecuted for your name. I'm being persecuted for your glory. I, you know, he doesn't know if it's God's will for him to die in this situation or if it's God's will for him to be lifted out of this situation. And this might be kind of a question you don't want me to ask, but this is just, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm getting you off track here. But you got to kind of think about it too. You look at that situation and I guess it plays into why does good, bad things happen to good people? It's like, why was he saved? And then 
John the Baptist wasn't. So that's actually, it's really, uh, I don't want to say funny, but for lack of a better word, it's interesting that you bring that up because I had just watched something um, on that one pastor that I've been watching a lot, and we get that all the time. Why does God allow evil? Why does God let evil happen? Why do good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? When God made the earth, he didn't make evil. He didn't make evil. Evil is not God's fault. Evil is our fault. So when Eve decided to go against the commandment of God, fall into temptation by Satan, and she introduces sin into the world, and Adam, same thing, I'm not like singling out women, but when you know she takes it to Adam, and then Adam does the same thing, and then they're immediately, they're afraid, they feel shame over their nakedness, that's when sin enters the world, that's when everything went downhill, so literally evil, evil is our fault, evil is man's fault, because we, we fell, we, we decided, you could literally... But I'm going to stop you right there. That's not kind of what I was saying. and Because I know what you're saying. I don't know the answer to that, but I'm kind of like more for people that are just watching. But my my point was it was divine, um, completely as you bank, you know, divine interception when it came to him. But, you know, he was a product, what was happening to him being thrown in the limestone was a product of evil, yes. But he had divine intervention step in and save him. So, you know, all the apostles, what I'm trying to get out of you is the the end result of him being saved, what domino effect that created, and then like the apostles getting killed and God not stepping in and having divine intervention with that. Do you kind of know where I'm going? What was the domino effect of them needing to be sacrificed and die and him not stepping in? And then why did he step in? Well, for the um, effect? that may just be like a totally off the chart question, but. Well, I mean, we, we're not going to know all of the things that God does or does not decide to do. So the, the main point of what I was saying was the, that bad st- it happens equally on both sides. Right. And that's all, it's all, it all just boils down to sin. I mean, it's literally all the evil in the world, everything that bad happens, it all boils down to the sin problem. And the thing with the disciples, the apostles, they got to follow Jesus and then they got to live you know, 40, 50, 60 years, however much longer after that in order to write their letters which are the books of the Bible that we have, the Gospels and then Acts and, you know, First Peter and all those. And it was after those that they were martyred. Um, and the best way that I can think to answer it would be that, yes, it, it is all the sin problem. Um, and the other side... Of, I don't know at uh, this time. No, like, I'm saying... <laughs> see, like, I totally I'm, put you, gotta, you on the spot. I'm getting there. The other thing is... A lot of people don't realize the reality of the spiritual warfare that we are literally in. That's Mm. Jesus, the first thing he says when he, you know, comes up, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, He was literally inaugurating the kingdom of heaven. He was showing Satan, who is the God of this world. Hey, Brittany. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) That um, he was showing. That's my friend. (laughs) That's my friend from a long time ago. Well, I'm glad she's watching. Um. He was showing, he was doing direct warfare against Satan. That's why the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, we fight against principalities. That's why all of the, the wars that go on in the world are reflecting the wars that are going on in the spiritual realm. So when mm-hmm. things are stirring up, as we're seeing now, there's all of these wars going on and you can feel within like the church and, and, and the body of Christ just that oppression because of the spiritual warfare and the, the physical wars in the world are uh, directly reflecting that. And so as there's wars going on there, there's wars going on in the spiritual realm and, and people, especially... Um, I can just see your brain is just... <laughs> the, the, the people, the big problem is... And there's a big bone to pick with Western culture and um, American culture with the whole like the, you know, oh, why is church this long? Why can't you preach for 20 minutes? And it's just we have gotten so comfortable that the majority of us have forgotten what exactly we belong to. We're supposed to be heirs in Christ. We're supposed to be having dominion over the, that's a good point. We're having dominion over the world. We're supposed to subdue the world and have dominion over the world. And people seem to forget that we are, 
We're like warriors for God. We, we are everything we, like this right here, talking about the gospel, that's warfare against Satan's kingdom. Praying, that's warfare against Satan's kingdom. So, And like what she said, John I the just, Baptist. I don't know why that just struck, and I, I feel so bad for her family, and that was such a tragic thing, but, you know, what she's saying that, and I'm by no means suggesting that that little girl, Bailey, that passed away, that her her story was over, like her purpose was over. I no. would never say that, but you have to think about it too. How many people she saved by passing away? It started a, a good little revival. Oh down yeah, over and there. that um, I think uh, the church Brittany goes to, my friend. She, um, they were able to, and I'm, oh my gosh, I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way, but because of the, uh, because of their. Um, you know, stepping in and really, I think they were the ones that did the baptism. I think it's, I don't want to say, you remember the name of the church? It's Trent? No, I don't remember the name Brittany, of the put the name of the church in the, I completely forgot for some reason. But, you know, they were able to get a bigger building because they completely overflowed yeah, that's where a perfect they were problem. at. You know, and they're getting, uh, you know, more and more people coming in literally because of their... Um, I'm so bad at words. Testimony? But they're, no, they're just because of they Because they made an impact. Yeah, because of she was connected to that church. So it's like with, you know, John the Baptist and Daniel, if God obviously knows the future. Mm-hmm. So that temporary pain of maybe on the family of Bailey, you know, she's in a much, much better, better place. place. <laughs> you know, but the temporary pain of the family going through what they're going through still to this day, obviously, you don't get over the death of a child. No. But that versus, I mean, there was like, what, hundreds of kids that got baptized? I think it was hundreds of people in Palaka that got baptized. Yeah, they planted a, a big and seed. And so we never know because obviously we don't have all that information in the Bible on what John the Baptist's death, how many people were brought because of his death on that. So, you know, she made a good point with that, that maybe his purpose, his purpose was to die. Well, you look at... In that line of thinking, you look at Moses. He was 120, still had strength. He was an old fella. And he was, he was an old fella. And he was he, an extremely old fella. He still had fella. his strength. He still had, you know, the light in his eye. But God removed him from the earth. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I mean, it sounds weird or bad, but when, when it's your time, it's your time. keep forgetting that they're time. going to a literal better place. Oh, yeah. That's that's the thing. You you. It's weird, and that's the thing with that's one of the things I was, I was, Trinity, I was saying. I Trinity Baptist. That was one of the well, things I, I was saying it, Sunday. <laughs> like, there's parts of the Bible that's not fun. Yeah, like you disagree with uh, elected leaders or whoever that's in charge, but it's like God is in charge of who is in charge. Whether we like it or not, we don't understand that serving a bigger, bigger purpose. And if you can kind of step back and look, it's like these last several years. Under this presidency, you see that a lot of people are waking up to just how uh, corrupt the system is, how corrupt politicians are, how corrupt such and such and such and such is, and it's just, it's creating this awakening and this reawakening, and it's bringing people back to the faith, and that's that's the thing when, when we begin to... Um, try to synchronize and intermingle like like the Israelites did where they would they would literally I was talking to dad about this earlier they would they kind of idolized the temple mm-hmm. and in the book of Jeremiah it's kind of revealed as he's prophesying their their destruction and their exile into Babylon it's it's revealed that God literally views them um, worse than the non-believers, worse than the people that are just actively worshiping false gods and false idols because they're going into the temple and pretending to worship God. And then the minute they leave, they go back and they're worshiping the false idols. They're sacrificing their kids to the false idols. Like, it's worse than the people that are just openly in that sin because they and know false better. False idols are not, uh, I think Tony was talking to me about this the other day, False idols are not just because a couple years ago, I was, you know, false idols, I thought, oh, oh, golden calf. Oh, my goodness, that scared me. A false idol could be um, 
I could, you could be my false idol. Anything you, you could literally be. If value I or spend more time you, than God is a yeah, false idol. If I put you above that, you would be a false idol. You know, if your I put, kids. Yeah, anything. anything. So, I just want to throw that in because I didn't even know that until, you know, I think Tanya said that something to me about um, idolatry, and I'm like. And then I sat for a second, and then I looked it up because I, I wasn't going to let her know that I didn't know what she was talking <laughs> about because she talks in code. Love you, Tanya, but good grief. I feel like decode all her sentences. She's like, the wind blows a certain way when you step out with your left foot. I'm like, what? <laughs> like I wouldn't even know what that means. I just made that up, but oh, I'm saying like that's how, that's how it is. So I have to, I have to like, you know. But that was just a side note because I didn't even know... It could be anything. You could make alcohol, you know, your idol. If, you know, check yourself if you're really needing something at the end of every single day. Check that yourself. was one of the things. <laughs> In t- taking anything. If you need to take ibuprofen every single morning because anything you got a headache become. every single morning. The thing is, the, the, the way things look have changed, but... No, nothing has changed. The Bible is still playing out the same way it has always played out. The demons just have new toys because humanity has gotten new technology. They're still, they know exactly how to tempt us, to tempt us, to trick right. us. They know exactly what to do, what to use, what to say, when to put it in front of your face. They've been at this for a very long time. Mm. And so you're wondering about the algorithm. Well, the algorithm was probably put in place by somebody that had demons in their life. So they knew what exactly to type in. I mean, they've got way more knowledge than we have. And they know everything about us, but anyway, to circle, sorry, to circle back. So, <laughs> go back to your stuff. Back every, to the sermon. Every time that we get on this together, we, we just go for go like this six way. hours. Um, so, yeah, well, that's a that's a, but that is that is a good point to make about about idolatry. Um, but it is it is we are seeing well, the, it connects the shift. Because they wanted the he wanted the king wanted people to worship him. Yeah. I mean, that was the same thing. Nebuchadnezzar did it. Well, not really. The, well, I guess you could say the king wanted them to worship him, but it wasn't his idea. It was, and to me, it was hilarious because it was just so like obvious. But obviously, uh, as Babylonian king, you know, and they viewed themselves, they, they, their culture viewed their kings as gods. So mm-hmm. it was a great idea to him. Terrible idea, period. Um, but that's just the thing. And that was, um, I think that was a really good point I felt was a good point to bring about it didn't it it, it, it allowed for uh, compromise it didn't have to they did you know he didn't he didn't have to bow down and worship this king but you can see from that story if you if you if you you know put your imagination and, and think between the lines of you know how does this speak to a modern society well okay if when the Antichrist comes and he's going to outlaw Christianity and there's some people that are going to fail and be led astray because they're going to go, well, I I can't do this now because if I do this, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. That's no reason not to do it. I mean, to live as Christ, to die is gain. So if they kill you and you're martyred for Christ, I mean, Jesus literally gave Stephen a standing ovation when he was getting martyred in the book of Acts. And it's just... That that whole system allows for compromise because you you'll step back and you'll be like, well, I, I'm not gonna pray to the king, I'm not gonna worship the king because, you know, I'm, I'm following God and He's God, but what I'll do instead is I just I just won't pray for 30 days. I'm not gonna read my Bible for 30 days. I'm not gonna do anything, you know, godly for 30 days, and you could just compromise your whole walk. But nothing, Tanya speaking in. Oh. Code and YouTube, like I told and, you. And you know that's just the whole thing. We have to, we have to stay steadfast in our faith. We have to finish, finish the fight, finish the race. You can't just. There is no turning back. And when you look at like that, just tying that back into the idolatry of the the in Revelation, you know, Jesus is going to vomit out the lukewarm people. You're either yeah, hot like, no, thanks. or you're cold. <laughs> like, I mean, either either be on fire for God like, no, or you. completely turn your back on Him because. No. 
if you're coming in into a church and you and then you go out and you immediately go back into the world and it's just Sunday morning is just your you know your little southern Sunday routine where oh you know we'll come in and listen to three points in a poem and some worship music and then as soon as I get in the parking lot post my scriptures on Facebook I'm putting scriptures. that stuff back on my radio and live in the same way I mean that's you're you're pretending and yeah. you're trying to you're trying to walk that fence and it's just God that does not work with God and I was thinking too, um, and it kind of, I was just thinking about it this afternoon, uh, you know, with Daniel and his, his trial, obviously not everyone's getting thrown into a lion's, I could be wrong, but you know, um, when you're going through something, when you're going through a, a trial or you're going through something, you know, people tend to do two different things. Well, they do a lot of different other things, but two different, <laughs> two different things. You know, you get this fear into silence. And let me kind of elaborate on that. You get this fear into silence where, you know, and you're going through something. Um, I don't want anyone to know. You know, this is something really personal. I don't want anything to know. Anyone to know. Um, I don't want to tell anybody about it. I don't want to, uh, I don't want anyone to find out, you know, or, you know, embarrassment or fear from retaliation from another person if you go and you talk about what you're going through. Or you can have the faith to, you know, speak out and not be silent. And um, I don't mean going onto Facebook and throwing your dirty laundry and making false accusations and saying blah, 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 blah. But, you know, you never know who's going through what. And I think you got to follow my train here. You never know who's going through what. So I think that the devil uses that fear and those insecurities and says, you know, um, you know, don't, don't, don't look like that. Don't be telling people that you're going through that, you know, and, uh, you know, act like a late, you know, silence. Don't tell anyone, you know, suffer in silence. They don't want to hear that from you or, oh my gosh, that'll go around town. They're going to make fun of you if you say, this is what I'm dealing with and you're more vocal about it and all that type of stuff. Um, because what he doesn't want you to know is if you are speaking up and saying, you know, hey, I'm going through this right now, or I just got out of this right now. Um, you don't know who next to you is going through the same thing, but they're suffering in silence, and they may kill themselves tomorrow, you know, because they feel so ashamed of what they have going on, or they feel, you know what I mean? They, they just, they don't, they think that nobody else is going through it. So I think, you know, while yes, there is a tasteful way to go about this, um, I don't think you should be quiet if you're going through Never. A, going through a hard time. I think you should be very vocal. I think the devil wants you to be quiet. I think the devil wants you to be scared if you're going through something with another person and they're hurting you. Or, um, you know, that's why people don't report when they get abused or they don't report any type of, uh, you know, harassment is out of fear. And why are they having fear? Why is their natural instinct not to right the wrong? their fear because they have something in the back of their head, you know, something in the back of their head saying, you know, oh, if you go, they're just going to call you a, a ho-ho. You know, they're going to, you know, if you go and report this assault, they're going to say you started it. They're yeah. going to say, and I'm talking more like the women's side of thing, they're going to say, you know, uh, nothing's going to happen. The whole, they're just going to make fun of you. You know, that's going to get spread around town if you make a police report. You know, they're going to make your life living... You said hell on stage, so I'm going to say hell. They're going to make your life living hell if you um, stand up to them. You know, what are they going to retaliate against you? How bad are they going to retaliate against you? Well, who cares? You know, of that's literally not God saying that to you. No. That's not. It's 100%. And it has taken me, it's what, a year and a half now? Um, you know, with my situation... It is taking me a year and a half. I started a situation scared. My whole body shut down. Um, I was terrified. You know, sh I couldn't get out of bed. I mean, you witnessed it. I completely fell apart. And um, I can tell you that no, no, no substance, no liquid, no medication, um, nothing but literally doing... Uh, devotionals, praying, and realizing at one point, 
I am not in control. This other person is not in control. What is the point of being anxious and scared and fearful and not standing up for myself, not standing up for my family? You know, what is the point of all? I'm not in control of it. So you might as well step up and step up in faith and say, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to protect my family, protect myself, stand up for what's right, you know, stand up for my family and, and pray about it. And it has been a total... I was going to say 360, but that would be right back in no. the same spot, <laughs> uh, a 180. Um, so I think it is super important. We need to, here I go off track again. We need to stop. We really have to stop with this just facade of everyone's fine. Everything's fine. Don't ruffle any feathers. Everything's fine. You know, because the people that are not fine, you know, who's going to help them? Nobody. They're not going to speak up because everybody's fine around them. You know? That whole... That all brings to mind the... I don't remember how many years ago it was, but the whole Me Too... And again, this is not an excuse to go put dirty laundry on Facebook. No, no, Please don't do that. No, that's not how you handle a situation. But... You remember the whole, the, the Me Too movement when it started coming out that oh, all of this Hollywood okay. stuff. Being scared, like you said earlier, being scared or, yeah. uh, you know, scared of someone or scared of anything is not an absence of faith. It no. does not mean you lack faith. No. I just need somebody to hear that because I was told that over and over again that, you know, the if, fear you're, is if you're what, scared, it, you don't it's believe what, it's God what is you in do. control. No, no. Like, you can be scared, but what do you do when you're scared? Is, yeah, it's you know, all in how you... Uh, it's all in how you address that. Respond. Um, it reminds me, it's, it's the, as one of the recent Elevation sermons, it's, it's the motion that matters. I know, they sent it to me. <laughs> it's the it's the motion that matters. Faith is faith is, is is not just stepping out when it all lines up and it all feels good. Faith is also stepping out in doubt. Faith is stepping out when it doesn't look right. Stepping out and speaking and up just when you're scared. There. It's 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 you know literally taking what you're going through and really think about it. You know, I made the post the other day like why me? You know why? Okay, why you? Obviously, why you? We can't stop the evil in the world like you said earlier. You, he couldn't stop being thrown into the lion's den. You can't... But what are you going to do when you're in lion's den? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to Well, everybody wants it to stop. They want God to intervene and just (laughs) remove it. But you don't learn anything that way. You don't. And you literally have to look at that. You know, why me? There's a purpose in John dying. There was a purpose in Bailey dying. You know, again, so sorry. Um, There was a purpose in Daniel living. You know, there's a purpose of you going through something. Now, if you are an alcoholic and you got cirrhosis, I don't know, you know, that's kind of on you, my friend. You know what I mean? But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it put a good way, but I don't want to mess it up. But God, um, he, he doesn't he doesn't supersede your choices. Right. So like that, free will. if you are, there's free will. And if, and, and if you're dealing with alcoholism, you know, we're praying for you. But like that, like when you, when you're in that so long and, um, you get to that point that you have cirrhosis, I mean, yes, God can heal you, but it is also your fault by your own choices mm-hmm. to have stayed in that and done that long enough to, no judgment, to get to that point. Honestly, no, I don't mean that in any judgment. It's just, it's just the reality of the thing. People, yes. we're so used to everything being in a filter now and looking fake and, and people setting up their phones so they can record themselves crying while they're making pancakes for their birthday, <laughs> acting like it's, you know, oh, and it's like, well, you, you set your phone, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. everything online now is <laughs> fake. So it's like I pictured that reel in my head. Yeah, it's it's stupid. Like we we set up all this stuff and we create all these fake scenarios, Mm -hmm. and it's just like that's not what we need to be. And like that, like you you were saying, like the whole thing of of loneliness, like like the people. And correct me if I'm wrong, because you know more about this than I do. But it's like I know more about suicidal people. (laughs) Like they feel like they have. I'm not saying you're suicidal. (laughs) You you know more. You're a nurse. (laughs) Um, Yes. Well, they, they feel like they have up. nothing left to live for, and they yeah. feel like there's no one in their life that cares. Mm-hmm. 
That's all the lies of the enemy. It's the same thing like what you're talking about. That's where I was That's going with the, up, you the me too thing. You have you. to let you, you have to speak up and then other people get the courage because you've spoken up. And that's not even just dealing with something. That's literally just speaking up in your faith. That's literally, literally just speaking about Jesus. Because if mm-hmm. somebody in your school or your workplace gets to the point that they see you praying or reading your Bible at lunch and telling people about God and they're a Christian, they'll get the courage to start speaking to someone else. And it creates this domino effect. And people need to realize, like, as I was talking about however long ago earlier about being in warfare, um, we, we are at war and we need to be taking people back into the kingdom of God away people from are the enemy. You. Exactly. That's what you said. That was the sermon, yeah. right? Okay. Well, that was part of one of the parts. But people, you know, people are watching. I have 813 friends. I thought one just got deleted. Way more than me. I have 813 friends on Facebook, okay? I make a post about Christianity. I will have eight or 10 likes, but you cannot tell me that 800, 803, 803 people didn't just see, people are going to watch this and be like, Jared's wife is just not smart. (laughs) You literally are above average Um, intelligence. It was proven by an expert. There's like something on either side of the door. The Holy Ghost. So... Uh, you know, 803 people saw that post. You can't tell me out of 803 people, it didn't, someone didn't think about that maybe for the rest of the day. What matters is... So people are watching. The so seed don't that gets planted. do stuff, because when I really was trying to like, I really want to be more vocal about the Bible. I really want to start putting what I'm going through and the thoughts, I'll just get ran, a whole random speech in my head and I'll put it in my Google, you've seen it, on my little Google Keep or my notepad on my phone. There's like all these just random things. And <laughs> what? And um, I get really insecure before I post them. Super insecure. Oh my gosh, people are going to make fun of me. This sounds really dumb. Nobody wants to see this. And then you'll get, you know, two or three likes and you'll go, wow, I really shouldn't have done that. You know, that mm-hmm. was putting way too much out there. Obviously, I don't say what I'm going through, but I, I speak on like, you know, fear and your purpose and all this type of stuff that I'll get in my head. I don't think like, I'm not doing this for likes. You know, you're not doing it for likes. You don't know what kind of people that don't want to like it just because they don't want you to know that they read it. Yeah. So my encouragement is just put it out there. You don't know who you're helping. You keep looking at the... I'm just reading the comments. Oh, um, you don't know who you're helping when you speak up. You know, you really don't. Exactly. Uh, And it's... You know, like Riley's little favorite movie that she's got right now, the whole storyline is this, you know, village girl that um, there's an evil king and she stands up against him. And at the end of the movie... Everyone stands up collectively. Because she's standing up. Like the king is actively... I wouldn't say he was killing her, but she wouldn't have to. In a a PG way, he was killing her. (laughs) Yeah. And... She's like singing the little theme song of everything and, you know, kind of singing it because she's getting, you know, zapped with his, you know, thingy. And <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, so anyways, long story short, at the end of the movie, she's singing, trying to, you know, she's still being the only one standing up to him. And then her courage literally sparks the entire village that's in chains and bonds and they're singing it all breaks the magical glue that has them glued to the floor and magical I don't know, that just glue. Me... <laughs> it was like that green magical glue. But that's my point. Yeah. Is you don't know who's watching you. You know, you don't know what type oh, of Oh, you could find out real quick who's watching you. Post a Bible verse and then post a bikini picture. Oh. And well, see which one gets more likes. And you'll pictures. know just how many people see your posts. Not like you, just in general. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I'm not posting a bikini picture. You, I don't even like being post, in a bikini. If you post anything, share mm-hmm. a funny meme, post the horses. But that's okay. Whatever. That's no, okay. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like that just lets you know. People are, are watching. They see it. So keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. That's you always point. have to keep. You, the, the, the point is that you're putting the seeds out there. That, that you're putting mm-hmm. God out there. And by them watching you. That 
can lead someone to repentance. That was the whole thing, like I said, like what you think is just routine could be leading someone to repentance. And, you know, that's just the importance of, of staying on track, of, of, of living a, a godly lifestyle from a biblical worldview, valuing and seeking first the kingdom of heaven, seeking Jesus first, seeking God, wanting to bring heaven down to earth. And by living that effectively, somebody will be led to Christ just mm -hmm. by watching you. It might take 5, 10, 15 years. Some, I guarantee you somebody will. Somebody will. Somewhere. Could be your own kids. Yeah. And, and even that, I mean, just the blessing of, you know, like I had that realization the other day when with, with Riley leading me in prayer for bedtime. It was just like that instant, like, That's really you're doing a good job. You're raising them right. Like, this is, this is good. This is important. And it's just... That's that's the the main thing. Like you have to you have to stay focused on God, and you know it's just it's just the unfortunate side effect in reality that you know people will hate you for it, and that's basically the thing about it too. The people are gonna hate you no matter what you do. So well, there's well that. Do the right but, thing and do it for well, God. Well, like Jesus said, <laughs> Father, forgive them. They they don't know they don't know what they're doing. They might be lashing out to you, and mm -hmm. it's really. Okay, so th this, this brings me back to, so verse Daniel 6. You put your hand up. And I stopped at, Stop well, because I, want, I wanted to bring this up tonight. And so Sorry. I stopped on 23 where Daniel was lifted out. The next verse, verse 24, says, At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Be careful who you marry, ladies. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that's literally it. Like, we don't realize, so, and that's... Justice. It's extremely depressing because, and I'm not saying the wives are in, you know, they could be yeah, complicit in something. Yeah, but isn't that kind of like a little, uh, it, it, the, whatchamacallit, the, the, where the man, it shows you like the man is the head of the household. It shows, so the well, man yeah, it can shows bring you the family down. The man is the head of the household. So when you're not living for God, that's that's trickling down into your home. That's why they say statistically, it's, it's proven, like if a man comes to Christ, it's pretty much guaranteed the family will come to Christ. If, if it's just the wife going the to church, thing I sent you. It's, it's, it's harder for the man to get involved just because the wife's going there. But if the man gets gripped, it will go into the home. Mm -hmm. And that's just the importance of like living that godly life because it mm -hmm. does affect your family. Like this, these kids and these wives were literally killed just because someone was up to evil and they were falsely accusing someone. And it's like... Okay, you can look at it as, all right, cool, they got justice and it's sad about the kids. The other reality is it's so depressing because they're prisoners of the warfare. They've got the demons within them. They don't have the Holy Spirit within them. So they're, they're captives by the dominion and the kingdom of Satan. And like when we, if we can step back and just truly grasp the, the reality of the spiritual warfare and that the people that do evil against us is all because there's, and I, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to be crazy, but there, there's, de if you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life, there's demons in you. That, and that's, that's biblical. I mean, you, you're under the, the rule of Satan and that's what's depressing is no matter, no matter who it is and how nasty they're being to you, it like, it, it they're headed towards eternal damnation and hell, and that's just incredibly sad. Like the reality is, no matter who that's it a is, hard spot. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard, and it goes against your flesh. It goes yeah. really hard against your flesh because you're sitting there. This person's saying this about me, and they're lying about me. Mm -hmm. But just like Jesus, Father, forgive them. They don't know. They don't. They don't know. They don't know. And it's like the the best thing you can do, instead of retaliating or hoping ill will against them, is literally pray for them. And that's biblical to pray for your enemies. Because, I mean, that, that is our duty to go out and make disciples to get everybody back into the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, but it's hard. <laughs> yeah, of course it's hard. Crucifying like, the flesh is supposed to be hard. Nobody's, but that's why our treasure isn't in this life. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't have much on that. No? Well, I mean, I mean it's, it's, not, it's another one of those things. It's not a fun point, but that's, it, it's biblical. And it's when you step back and realize... <laughs> that 
think of it like from a child's point of view, you know, do you think, <laughs> do you think they just want one of their parents in heaven or do they want both of their parents in heaven with them? And I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm just saying like, it's those little things you have to, <sighs> that's biblical and it's not fun, but that's crucifying the <laughs> That's just one of the, you have to shift your mindset and you have to shift your thinking to this, this hurts me. They hurt me, but God, God wants me to still preach to this person. God still wants me to love this person. Conviction is good for the soul. It's not fun, but it is good for the soul. Next question, (laughs) please. So, all right, back to the sermon since we haven't discussed it at all. Um, the the um being um Kelly. Kelly said that she liked my movie reference. Um and just for the Literally, we're never going to hear the end of this. You are so proud. No, it's not. I was given insight in the background, uh-huh. but never mind. We'll go to something else since you you don't want to join in fun games. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Batman. Actually, I wasn't gonna talk about okay. Batman. Um where did my notes go? Um well, what was one thing that stood out to you? Don't do this. <laughs> Would you like being on the spot? Um, what was uh, your favorite quote in the comments? Let me know your favorite quote. Um, one of the one of the really so I think that's a really good thing that, that I just passed in there was the the point of God is not seasonal. We usually want to. Uh, show up when times are tough. We want to start praying when it's all rough and everything's going apart. And then, oh God, you know, where are you at? Why aren't you here? And it's like, he was oh. there. He was there when I you were up here, but you got comfortable and you quit thinking about him and quit praying to him. And now you're down here and you're feeling the heat and the disconnect. And that's why it's important that it's, God is not seasonal. You have to stay Pressing I, saw this, I saw this reel, not to make it about social media, but it was a really good visual, visualization of um, <laughs> of this of this this girl made a reel, and she had a piece of paper and she cracked open a door and she you know how when they make reels by themselves you know they put yeah. on like a towel or something on their head to show they're a different person I don't know <laughs> so they they crack she cracked open the door. And she had the note, and she said, hey, God, can you please, like, help me out with this? And, hand, like, was handing the note to God, and which was her. Um, and <laughs> more about explaining this. And God was like, okay, yeah, you know, sure. And he took the note, and then he went to go say something else, like, hey, but how have you been? And he went, like, say, how have you been? And her back was already, and it cut, obviously, to her. Her back was already shut, and she was shutting the door. And it was exactly, like... Did I make sense? Mm-hmm. It's exactly like you give him, you know, I need you to get me out of this. You know, like I said, I'm you so put stressed. words to your worry. I'm so anxious, you know, get me out of this. And I'm super guilty of it because, you know, throughout this year and a half of everything, I won't forget, but, and I do my devotional every single morning, but I watch my devotionals. I'll do, you know, a devotion on whatever on the Bible app. But then when stuff's kind of hitting the fan and it's a little more active, the problem is, um, then my devotional is on, you know, worry and, you know, fear and, you know, overcoming trials, you know, suddenly my devotionals look like that and, uh, I'm playing catch up. Mm. And then as I'm going through something, I'm like, this is my fault. I should have I should have been more active in praying and more active with all of this. This is my fault. He's teaching me to get back on the track. And I don't think that's correct thinking either. You know? Um, uh, to a degree. It, well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? God like, is not, like, condemning you like that. But it is also the repentant. Yeah, well, that, know, and I'm feeling that's guilty. That's still speaking to you. And that gives you the repentant heart to realize, like, oh. But then I get into the frame of mind of, oh, if I do these devotionals, a lot of devotionals every single day, and I'm really, really in it, maybe he'll keep. Some that's that. falling into legalism. Exactly. That was my point that I was getting. Yeah. At. So that is, no, that's a good point. I was listening to something on that while I was putting the laundry away earlier. There is, that's a big problem. You were um, putting what? Especially, in, what? What? Putting away laundry. What were you doing? Oh, okay. That's a big problem in American culture. Um, 
And I would say in a lot of good actions, smaller churches is the legalism. It was it was a fair sequel way. They added it was something like they added like thirty extra laws just to the Sabbath, and the Sabbath literally it was supposed to just be a day of rest, but it became so burdensome mm. that the people needed a rest from the rest. And it was just too, like the Pharisees put so much extra into it. If you worked it. on the production team in this church, you going to need a rest from the rest. I'll tell you that. Especially if you're <laughs> the rest preaching. Is the Saturday. Shout out to Sunday Sunday is our day Amber. of worship. Um, what, what was it? Sorry. What was I saying? I don't know. I lost it. Me too. Great. The rest from the rest in the laws no, of the small before, church. Oh, the, it was, yeah. So it was just the legalist mindset of if I pray this long, mm-hmm. um, I'll look like this. If I read this many devotion, I'll devotionals, you, I'll look like this. Now you do get it's growth, hard to get sucked into and it's it, better that, that that process. But yeah, you get into that mindset of mm-hmm. it, it's almost well, and it, what probably makes it easier to slip into that is because we're so works based rewards society. If I work mm-hmm. for this many hours a week, I'll get this paycheck, and then mm-hmm. once I get enough of this money, I can go buy this item. And I, if I do this, I'll get this. Uh, you know, my parents give me a, in a weekly allowance if I do X, Y, Z on my chore mm-hmm. chart. And we've just been conditioned to, if I do this, Tanya's this will come. Um, but that's just the thing is like, that's not, every, everything's already been done. You're just supposed to the point of the devotional, just to boil it down to its most base thing, is it's not about the rules. It's not about what you do. It's literally just having a relationship with Jesus. That's all the, 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 the prayer time and the devotional time should be just about getting a deeper relationship with Jesus. That should be your main focus, is literally just getting to know Jesus more and understanding him you know, think of it, this is going to sound so weird, but think of it like when you're first dating someone and you're learning things about them and you're asking questions. Because I think a lot of people, they, they, they think they can't ask questions of God. Like, and you can't approach the Bible with a curious attitude as if God doesn't know your thoughts and doesn't already know everything that's going on in your head anyways. And we try to like hide God <laughs> or hide our thoughts from God. Well, <laughs> Sorry. I just uh, did that this morning. I just did that this morning. So I, I literally, and this is, this is just, y'all didn't want fake. Y'all gonna hear it. <laughs> I literally, you know how in the morning, every single morning, uh, we do. Well, not every single morning. I'm not gonna lie, but try, I try. You do. You like. You what? Your alarm goes off at five. Thanks so much for that. And then, you know, you're over there every five minutes. That's because my nose is running. Like, Somebody's going like, oh, this guy's, I knew they were the cocaine church. Oh, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're doing all your reading, which I don't know how you just straight up just read. Like, I, you know. So I'm laying there this morning. I think it was this morning because you actually, because you'll read for like an hour or two, then you fall back asleep. And then I finally pitifully wake up, you know, and I got up this morning and I had a, you know, the devotional, I think I'm doing a devotional. I just finished it today with uh, Julie and a couple other people in church. And um, thanks for joining us, by the way, on that one. I did the first day. The I have one. so many of my own. <laughs> oh, I have so many of my own. <laughs> and oh, Pastor Jared. So I'm laying there, I'm laying there. I probably should not tell this story, but I'm going to do one too anyway. So I'm laying there and I have the devotional and I'm just, you know, like, I'm reading it. And I realize I'm like reading it super fast, which I read super fast anyway, but I'm just like reading it. Okay, reflect. All right, got it. Reflect. All right. And then I switch to like the, the scriptures. And I'm reading the scripture. Yes, 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 yes. And then you know how the Bible app, you can go to the next one. Okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, that's a nice one. Highlight. Then I go to the next one. Highlight. Great. Hmm, done. All right. And then I'm laying there and I've tried to, because you yelled at me because I'm not praying enough. Whoa. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see your page. What? Um, like, when was this? And I'm trying to just pray after, you know, 
after my devotional, so I'll just lay there and close my eyes. Sometimes I put my sleep mask on because I have my eyes open and I'm like looking around the room and I start thinking about other things and I, go, oh, I close my eyes. So I put my sleep mask on, right? And I'm laying there with my sleep mask and <laughs> I start praying and I'm just praying and then I get... I get a couple sentences in and I'm thinking at the same time of like, okay, wrap this up because I want to get on Facebook and I want to go through like reels oh, until Jared wakes up. And then I was like, no, 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 no. And then I get back to praying. And then a couple seconds later, I want to just hurry up on Facebook reels, you know? And I finally am like, who am I kidding? He literally knows what I'm thinking. And I was like, Bro, I'm sorry. Like, I obviously am. And it was such a moment because I'm like, who are you trying to fake out by, you know, you're doing the And so I just stopped praying. I'm like, I'm sorry. I literally can. And no, I did not get on Facebook and look at the reels. I got up, let the dogs out, made coffee for you, your royalness. And, you know, started breakfast and started getting the kids. But my point is... You know, we're not faking them out by mm-hmm. doing these things that I thought I would be, I was, you know, faking them out by checking off my, my prayer. And I'm like, what am I doing? And I was like, and I literally said in my head, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, actually, I said, I'm sorry, bro. I was like, I, <laughs> my dude, I just realized you're just sitting there being like, I, I know what you're thinking and I know what you're trying to get to. This isn't working. Stop it. So I just, I just, I said, stop it. But, um, or he said, stop it. And I said, okay. So (laughs) I guess that's my point being is he knows. I didn't really have a point with this, but I just wanted to share that, that it's okay. I mean, it's probably not super okay. Let's like, let's work on this together, but it's okay to have those moments of just, you cannot focus and I have a hard time praying anyway because I literally will say a couple words in my head and then I'll go this way with what I'm thinking about. And then I realize like, oh, I'm not praying anymore. You know, so what I've has helped me and actually the last week is I've tried as I'm just walking somewhere, walking in the bathroom, I'm trying to just say, hey, thank you for these floors. You know, I'm like, thank you, God, for today. And sometimes I literally repeat, thank you, God, for today seven times because I don't know what else to say, you know. And that has helped me with literally just, I've learned that I can't do long prayers. I can't go in a prayer closet. You know, I can't sit there, you know, like you and and pray and study for hours. I cannot do it. So it's like what works for me is short little inner bursts, like short it's, little I, that, intervals, short little bursts. There's nothing wrong with, I mean, it's praying consistently of, and constantly. You know, so to me, just getting into the habit of things, uh, like with working out, a thing I read, if you're having a hard time getting into working out, you work out for five minutes. That's what I'm trying to do now because I've gotten out of working out, but work out for five minutes. If it's doing planks on the bedroom floor, five minutes, you've worked out and it becomes habit. So I'm trying to just pray randomly. And the only thing that I've noticed that I'm really good at is being like, thank you for this. That makes a huge difference. Thank you Um, for this because I'm trying like from Sunday, you said, I think it was this Sunday, but at one point you said, you know, is your prayers, are they just your worry list? Mm. And that's all my prayers have been. They have been like, oh, I'm really stressed out. I'm really scared. You know, and a, I don't want this to happen. And then <laughs> that's the voice I use when that's I pray. What use? Yeah, oh, I'm like, weird. I don't want this to happen. So I no wonder you don't do it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a it, so, that can really shift your prayers though if you step back and approach God with a, a gratitude mindset. Yeah. And thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for what you did at this point in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you step back and just are in awe of God and, and praise him and worship him and, and giving him glory first in your prayer, which is mm-hmm. being thankful for the things that he's done, who he is, what he has done, and then you bring him like, you know, God, I'm I'm struggling with this. Give right. me the strength to get through this. That that it it shifts everything completely different than just 
coming up to him and and like that, putting words to your worry and just giving the laundry list, you know, like it's like it's a Christmas list and we're coming up to God with, all right, like the girl handing a piece of paper, I, I need this, I need this, I need this, bye, mm-hmm. see you later whenever I talk. And that's the thing I think a lot of people need to get to with their prayers being like gratitude and then realizing it doesn't have to be this 30 minute three hour session in a closet with soft music it can be in the car (laughs) driving around it can be five short sentences just talking to god um and like that like god is our best friend like he's your friend he's your father you should talk to him like one Uh, we approach god so many people approach God in different ways and almost like he's going to be angry with what we are bringing to him or, Mm. you know, disappointed and like that. Like, he already knows your thoughts. He already knows what you're thinking. It was. And he already knows. so embarrassing. So... I'm like, this is why I don't pray out loud. You're like, let's pray together. Let's pray out loud together. I'm like... That's probably not a good idea. (laughs) You do it. See, even, even Dad said he likes short bursts. Well, that was one of the things, too, with the Pharisees. They were all about being, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they were so public with it, but they wanted they were public with it so people would watch them. Mm-hmm. And they would go out there. Oh, I think there's prayers. a clip of it on one of the Chosen, chosen episodes where he's, like, standing there, and he's just on and on and on and on and on and on mm-hmm. and making this big show about it. And it was that was all it was for them, was mm-hmm. just looking holier for the people that were watching them. And it was like, I think there was that one point where Jesus literally just, or not Jesus, but there's a guy just beating his breast and, and praying that way. And God was like, he's more righteous than the other one. Or Jesus mm-hmm. said that. I'm butchering the story, but you get the point. Gosh, Pastor Jared. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, with that, I, I think we're, we're pretty, Sorry. pretty far over. Um, thank you guys for staying. You for did staying. a really good job on Sunday. Sunday was, was a lot of fun. My absolute I'm most favorite like thing. I'm kind of like dreading this Sunday because it's like your dad. Yeah, um, you know, just I'm just kidding. Snorefest. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I, 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 and I said it. He did really good last, last Sunday. Sunday too. The Sunday before that was great. Um, Hashtag Kookaburra Coffee. So I think we're we're both. I feel I think we're know, both you know. stepping into a different level with our with our walk and our in our preaching, and I'm really happy with that. I'm happy to see it. Um, keep keep that energy up. I know he's still watching, but I, I think yeah, he's up to bat this Sunday. Um, but well, yeah, I mean, you're doing. I mean, in defense with him, you know, you're doing something for over 40 years. It can get... Oh, anything will get stagnant for that long. Repetitive. And That's it why it's hard gets, to keep things fresh yeah. and finish the good fight. That's why a lot yep. of people, um, you know, will end up abandoning their faith because they're just tired of the grind. But mm-hmm. it, the, the, the thing to always keep your focus and your hope on is just, like we said earlier, like we're, we're not living for here. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter the stuff we accumulate here. It was in... I meant to post this on Facebook and I'll... If somebody doesn't steal it before I post it... Um, we we're, we're we've gotten so used to trying to accumulate more stuff instead of accumulating more souls for the kingdom of God. That should be our focus. Jared Cochran TM <laughs> trademark <laughs> hashtag. Um, but that it. should be that should be our focus. Not and not saying it's it's a bad thing to have you know things or a nice house or whatever. And God can bless you with those. And God will you know whatever. But the main focus should not be getting more stuff. It should be getting more souls out of the enemy's hands and back into the kingdom of heaven. That, that is what matters the most in this life yeah. is living for that day, the day when we're all in heaven for eternity because after that, it, it, it's shut off and it's going to be great. But unfortunately for whoever's still lost, that's going to be awful. I mean, like, and you don't want it to be your husband. That's awful. Or your wife. Yeah, or your and mom, and or your grandma. That's that's or why it's grandpa. so important. Always, always stand up in your faith. Stand firm in your faith. Share your testimony. It doesn't matter who's going to make fun of you or mock you or or betray yeah. you or persecute you for it. You got to share your faith. I mean, it is that is the most important thing you can do. Yep. Is share the love of Jesus to someone else. And, and speaking it's of sharing, literally what we're supposed to do. What? Speaking of sharing, before you cut me off, um, no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. Share the stuff. If everybody could share the stuff with the land. Um, yes. You know, I'm sure there's rumors going around. You know, they just want to. Uh, you know, 
get famous and get a big building. I can assure you that's not a thing. Um, I don't like this right now. I'm not going to like anything bigger. (laughs) I don't like talking. Um, I don't like being in front of a camera. I don't like attention. Neither do you. So that's not the point. Um, The point is, is we really want to make a place, uh, you know, make a place that's going to be a building to house enough people. We want a building that's going to have, we have plans and I'm not going to say it, but we have buildings, uh, I mean, plans for an amazing kids center that um, we're hoping that we'll have the ability to have it open um, a couple days during the week for the community, for kids to have an an indoor area, and that's all I'm going to say, indoor area for kids to um, play and not be stuck doing video games and not there's anything wrong with video games, but you know what I'm saying. You know, um, we want to have, uh, this, and I hope your dad doesn't get mad at me about this, but we were just talking about how cool it would be to have a softball field at the very corner, you know, for, uh, that would be kind of ironed out. Who would, oh, just spit my gum out. That would be kind of ironed out who <laughs> it would be for, but we would aim for the community. You know, he, if, you know, you didn't know already, he really wants an outdoor uh, amphitheater. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but... <laughs> There's so much land out there that it would be really cool to have an outdoor, outdoor amphitheater. amphitheater. Right now, he's yeah, like... Wah, 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 wah. Was, we, we got to wait a minute and a half. So, uh, point being is we are not trying to get this, and I say we, I don't have any legal ties to it, just for the record. <laughs> My name is not on anything, just for the record. <laughs> um, you know... Uh, the church, let's say that the church is trying to get this land not to, um, you know, get all floozy and to get uh, the main thing is the main to reach the is, lost and help the community. Is we really, to be a voice in we the really want to build a really great place of community, you know, make the food drive bigger, uh, you know, do more for the obviously keep the homeless, you know, thing going and. Be able to do stuff where we have youth retreats or, um, you know, and I'm just thinking of stuff, but uh, have a place, you know, this has been wonderful. This is an amazing area that we have right here, but we're very limited. You know, we're extremely limited to what we can do in this building and what we can do outside the building and what have you, you know. Um, Having that place frees this building up for another place in the community to lease out and have, you know, four people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if, you know, people can really share that, um, you know, obviously the giving is going to be the root of all of this. If you have uh, rich friends... (laughs) Who have multiple if boats? Somebody on my friends list makes five hundred. See if grand someone can sell their boat, <laughs> one of their boats, and you know, help us out with that. We really want to be able to, you know. Well, that's the thing. We are so done. because we're you get so the land price, to... and then we have the price of the building, you know, and it's going to be. Well, we don't think twice about attack. going and buying a new vehicle. We don't think twice about buying more new clothes, new hats, uh, going and getting our hair done all the time, getting our nails done all the time. We have no problems going to movies and concerts and sports events. And not that anything is wrong with that, but as soon as we're called to put money into the church so that the gospel gets farther and we can help more of the homeless and building the wheelchair ramps. As soon as a church starts asking, you know, and needing money because it needs money, uh, the, one of the awesome things I heard today was like, oh, you know, this building and this microphone and the cameras and all that, you don't just pray that into the building. That, that takes money to happen and it's going to take money for the lights to continue to stay on and for the message to get out. So, you know, we're we, we, super we're grateful for everybody I, that is a partner yeah. already. But and it's and it's people say, well, what do y'all? We tithe everything we get. We do ten percent back into this mm-hmm. church. So you know, if we can do that, and it's your church. Well, you, <laughs> you go in the Bible you know, and your there's the, the lady, she gave all she had when she had nothing. And it yeah. was all about that. Just giving from what you have. That's still trusting God. That's an act of worship. And I mean. Speaking of, and then we'll obviously we'll stop, but uh, I didn't always tithe at all, and you were the one that convinced me, and I was so absolutely wigged out, freaked out to tithe because, you know, I, I, I just, I didn't want to be without, and um, 
seeing that 10% go every single week is, was, was terrifying. And, um, I panicked for a good while (laughs) and because you have access to the giving, I was scared that you'd catch me not tithing one week. So I kept tithing. And um, we haven't been without. All of our bills have been continually. It's funny how that works out, isn't it? funny how that works. (laughs) And we haven't had an issue with bills. Um, If we had had an issue, you have gotten a school refund check in the mail for the exact amount, which doesn't creep me out. But, yeah, it creeped me out. I was like, what is this? And uh, that happened to us twice that we got a random check, a refund check, either from like FPL or was, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't FPL because FPL would never send us money back. But yeah, they'll burn um, that up somewhere else. Yeah. So it With was your school check, check, and then it was it was like a month or two later. It was some other refund check that I had no idea was coming, and it covered that amount. And literally, and I, we kept going, and ever since then, we haven't had a single issue. Haven't had a pay increase, you know, haven't had anything like that to make the bills meet. But for some reason, bills have been getting met. So That's how God does it. Um, when you honor God, he honors you. Yeah. In everything. That's not just tithing. When you, when you stand up for God in your faith, mm-hmm. things shift and he, things move and, and he blesses that. So that it's, it's just the importance of everything you do, really not just your walk. <laughs> we'll end on this. Not, not just your walk, but your, your finance. And, you know, like I said, yeah. we, we want to trust God with our soul, but not our savings. And it's like, we can't, <laughs> we can't take any of this to heaven. Your dad, Which y'all one? told me not to say anything about the plan. Oh, well, he'll go off on everything. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We're heading into um, a growing season. Continue to invite people to not just church. Share the stuff when we go live. Share the stuff when uh, we post it on YouTube. YouTube is where all the archives are. I know we have it on the app and stuff like that, but that doesn't really help it spread as much. Um, and like it, it's 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 and please it's and vital don't and don't, and don't be don't be snobby. If someone you take bring them to this church, pop, 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 pop. if you bring someone to this church, and they're like, eh, that's not for me. Tell them about other churches in the area. We have them Just listed on our website. Them, if you didn't know, get them to go to church. And I, I can't stress that enough. It's it, it, share what you can from this just to get the word out, you know, and obviously that's great. And I'm not saying don't do that. But then if you bring someone to church and they're like, you know, you know, Pastor Philip, Pastor Jared, they're not really my style. I kind of, and I don't really like that. that's perfectly fine. Totally fine. Please don't shun them. Don't be like, I have a bunch of friends, you know, even Brittany, you know, she's active in, you know, Trinity Baptist Church. And that's, that's awesome. I'm never going to, my brother and sister-in-law go to a colonial, you know, it's what works for them. And I would never feel a certain way about, you know, oh, they're not at my church, you know, my friends need kind of, it's, that's not cool. No. Please don't do that. No. And there's no best church or best pastor. Uh, I know, you know, we get well, excited about who we, aren't. who we, though of course there's not good ones, but you know, we do get, I get it. Anyways. Um, no, Ooh. but it's important to invite Sunday. people, invite, invite people um, to share this stuff because it doesn't spread without sharing and likes and comments. It's annoying and I'm not begging you to do that stuff, but we, we are trying to get the gospel out. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, with the way that online platforms are, when it's post not these right now, when it's live, when it's posted on the archives and all the other uploaded videos, if you don't share them and you don't like it and comment on it, just viewing it doesn't do anything. There has to be engagement. And it takes five seconds to type, this is great, whatever, and hit share. Less than 30 seconds and you're spreading the gospel to your friends, which can plant a seed in their life. So it's not just about us trying to blow up. It's trying to reach as many people as possible because like it or not, the reality is right now, every single second, someone is dying and someone is going to hell and we want to reach as many people as possible to bring them into the kingdom of heaven to bring them back into God's arms where they belong regardless of if you don't like them or if you do like them they need to be in God's arms so that's just that's the reality of it with that we'll see you Sunday we love you I pray that you guys have a great what is your dad preaching on Sunday I don't remember um (laughs) 
So okay. there's that. Um, I'm sure you'll drop it in the comments. But with that, what are you preaching, Dad? We'll see you on Sunday. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.